Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be making another solar system but this time we've done the largest star, we've done a quasi star, we've done a cold star and all of the other ones we've done but today we're going to be making a system around the smallest star or one of the smallest stars I'm not sure if it's still classified as the smallest but I know it's definitely one that is very small so we're going to be uh, helping straight into a new simulation for this and getting this little star up so it's called EBLM here you would have probably seen it in one of my size comparison videos at some point so yeah EBLM JO55557 AB so if we place it in here it's a custom made object if you want to make your own there are its stats there but yeah this guy radius 9.45 earth so if we compare that to say Saturn so, for instance, if we put Saturn next to it, that's Saturn. We put Jupiter next to it. Jupiter's actually bigger. So it slots in between our solar system's gas giants. If we compare it to the Earth, again, it's not that large of a star. And also, if we compare to the Sun itself, yeah, the Sun kind of demolishes this thing in size. This is a really, really small red dwarf. And, yeah, one of the smallest known, if not the smallest. So, yeah, here it is. So we'll just delete those. Click play. So there's EBLM right there. Right, so we'll just go ahead and get rid of those two underscores. Right, good stuff. So there's our star. Now, it's only got 85 masses of Jupiter here, so it's quite low. I'm not sure if that's its actual mass, because this object was built to get a correct radius, not a correct mass. But yeah, we've got 85 Jupiters to work with in size, so... We can't really be adding large gas giants around this thing, for obvious reasons. We probably could sneak one in, but probably won't be the largest thing ever, so... Smallest star, obviously it's not going to be the biggest system in the world because, I mean, this star can only probably handle so much. So, first planet around a small star. So, I'm just thinking of, like, red dwarfs in general. So, if we compare it to Proxima, for instance. So, yeah, Proxima, a little larger. But Proxima, I believe right now, it has one confirmed planet, which is Proxima B. And then it also has another one. I was actually talking about this um, in Discord recently, actually. Um, but, yeah, it also there's also a theoretical Proxima D, which is like a second planet, which is like a Mercury-like hot little rock. So I'm thinking Proxima Proxima B was supposedly an Earth-like world, so we could probably sneak something like that in. And then we could probably make a little hot Mercury-like world as well for this, just to start off with. So Proxima B, I think I will actually use it as a template. Do I have any custom Proxima Bs? I don't know if I... No, I don't. Okay, so I'll use the bulk standard Proxima D here. I just spawn a random one anyway. So I'm going to put Proxima here. Um, actually, what I do want as well, I want to put the zone on. So there we go. So this thing's zone is obviously nothing special. I mean, if we compare it to Proxima quick as well. Yeah, Proxima's quite a lot more. Obviously, the sun. Yeah, a lot, lot more. And that's just the sun. So yeah, pretty, pretty crazy size. So yeah, we can't have stuff really too far away. So I'm going to put Proxima B here. So there we go, there it is. And then I'm also going to go over random, I'll go random moon actually. I'm going to place that, I guess, in the red area. So we could sort of build this like a Trappist-1 system as well and have a lot of rocky planets orbiting in fairly close proximity. So, right, here's what we got so far. So what if we can actually see the other planet? Can we actually see the... Oh, no, you can't really see it from our current view. I, I don't know, yeah. I was hoping we would have been able to spot it, but I guess it's too small. So, right, here's Proxima B in the meantime. So we'll turn off the zones. Right, so what have we got to work with? So it's a lot of oceans on it at the moment. Okay, um, I will lower that a bit. I don't want it to be too much. So, yeah, I'll make it sort of like an Earth-like sort of world. But it's not going to be as hattable as a good old Earth. So, right, there it is up there. Um, Temperature-wise, how hot will this thing warm up to? I'm guessing it's not going to be anything crazy. So... I'm hoping it will sit around maybe minus 10. I mean, I don't want it getting much colder than that. So let's see. Uh, we can run this fast. I mean, there's only two objects in there. So how? So it's still getting too cold, right? I want to make it closer. Actually, I want to give it an atmosphere first before we start changing its orbit. So uh, atmosphere pressure. Um, what are we thinking? Um, 1.1 Earths. Why not? The object is slightly larger than the Earth in mass. So we'll go with that smaller radius, though. Right. So there's Proxima B. Right. Zero degrees. Still getting too cold. Right. So... Um, I also want to check its um, infrared is okay. Um, albedo is quite low. So, yeah, we're going to start lowering this down. So, 2.82 days. That should make a big change on temperature. And there we go. So, it's warm enough. Okay, so that should sit comfortably in there. And then the first planet, I'm guessing this... Yeah, this shouldn't make any problems for it. It's already quite a small little world anyway. So, let's see. How, how large is this thing in radius of kilometers? Okay, so it's rough, roughly the size of Mercury. I mean, Mercury's about... I think Mercury's 2,400... And 40, this is 2,332, so that's fairly close to a Mercury. Um, let's just remove the water, no no water nonsense here. Um, I will put it on directional light, just so we can see the colours properly. So, right, there it is, good stuff. 
Right, so that's what it looks like. So greenish sort of shades. Yeah, not what I'm really looking for here. And actually, I've got a better idea. What I think I'm going to do, actually, it's a Mercury-like world. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a Mercury instead. I'm going to delete that. Right, so Mercury is now our template. So that should orbit comfortably there. Right, good stuff. Now, appearance. We're going to go to um, surface colors, yes. Custom. So we're going to do that. And then we're just going to sort of make a sort of op a, a well. So it's kind of similar to Mercury, but kind of not. So... There we go. Still got all the craters because it's not often I have objects with craters in my systems. That's definitely a trend I haven't been doing. Is I haven't had any craters or anything like that in my um my ones because I never use any of our planets or moons as templates. So what are we thinking? Uh, we could have it as quite almost like a reflective world. I mean, no, no, I want it to be a sort of bog standard hot rock. So greys, sort of dark colours, different shades in there. I don't want it all being the same shade of grey. And then this shade could be a sort of darker grey, I guess. Or what we could have is maybe a slight... Mercury has a slight, a slight, slight brownish colour to it. So maybe I have one of the colours as a brown, maybe? A very, very faint brownish shade? I mean, what, what, what do we think of that? Um, and then make this one... Okay, so what about... Uh, let's try that one with the brownish shade and then make these ones grey again. Yeah, I, I think I, I'm going to like... I think I'm going to go with that. So, yeah. Why not? And then uh, how, how's this colour looking? So, yeah, we can have sort of the greyish sort of shade of... Yeah, the greyish and then like a brownish grey... So something like that, yeah, why not? And then this grey, I want to darken it just a tad bit. So the uh, grey areas stand out a bit more. This one I'm going to make just slightly less vibrant in shade. Maybe a little lighter. And there we go. So that's what I'm going to... Uh, yeah, I'll roll with that. So um, let's call it Merc. There we go. So it's not exactly the same, but still similar naming. So there it is, compared to the star. So how long is it? 1.49 days orbital period. So compared to Mercury's... What, well, Mercury is... Is it Mercury 55... Or 80, I can't remember what it was. But yeah, Mercury obviously had a lot more um, orbit size than this one anyway. So, play. How warm will this object get? I'm guessing it should it should get some sort of temperature going. No. Oh, no, no, no. That is, is it warm? No, that is warm enough. Okay. So, uh, lower it down. We probably could sneak something closer to the star as well, actually. So, so that's going to warm up. I don't know how hot it's going to go. I want it to be quite... Yeah, I don't want it reflecting a lot. So, we'll leave it at... Oh, actually, I'll lower it a bit, so we'll pull it to 0 0.06, so it does absorb a lot of the light it receives. I'm going to make it just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit closer, to so 1.3 days, roughly. Right, so actually, now, why the objects are here as well? Yes, you can see the neighbouring planet. Oh, yes. So if we go on realistic, just to get the full... Yep, you can see Proxima B in the night sky. So, yeah. So let's see if we... We'll just land on the North Pole for the time being. And there you go. So you can see it in the sky there. Uh, Milky Way background. I do not want you in this simulation. Thank you. So oh, no, that's not what I meant to press. Just stars. Thank you. Right. There we go. Close that. Uh, land back on Merc. So we'll just go here. Then we look around. And in the night sky, you see uh, Proxima B. So there it is. Chilling over there. So we're going to be heading there right now. So that's... Uh, yep. So this world's all good. Um, now, do I add an atmosphere? No, I'm just going to go full on plain rock. Just like it should be. So just completely, completely simple design. Nothing too crazy there. Interface will have as a, um, I guess we could have it as a sort of the orangey shade. I guess, why not? So there's Merc. Right, now we've got Proxima B here. So it's all frozen up again. So what's going on here? So we're going to, I will lower the orbit just a tiny bit more as well. Let's go 2.5 days. Right, this water needs to melt as well, that's for sure. Let's just make it a gas giant. Just freshen the surface texture up. Add some blobs of water and then we'll just see how it how it works and then we need to go back to directional light thank you yes right so what are we thinking right um close that so i do want to give it a i'm gonna go with like an orangey sort of yeah i'm gonna go with like a almost like a dusty mars like atmosphere for it i'm thinking yeah something like that right now this water really needs to sort itself out because that is quite annoying 10 degrees can you warm up to 10? Uh, if it can sit at 10, that would be really, really nice. So let's see how it goes. I mean, it, it should... I'm, I'm guessing it will go down, but let's have a look. So how, how high is it going to go? If it just sits at 10, that's all good as well. Is it going to change? Surely it can't stay at just 10. Surely I wouldn't have got it that perfect just doing that. No way. So 5? Is it going to change from 5 if it goes up? It is going up. Right, perfect. So that is good. Uh, 6 degrees. Can it go up from 6? is going up from six or about eight can you go up from eight no yes okay nine if it sits just dead on 10 degrees that is awesome so it is going up from nine 
So if I put it to 10, how does it cope with 10? If it just stays stuck at 10, I mean, maybe we maybe we put it right in the Goldilocks zone, the sweet spot, and I don't have to change. If it just sits on 10, that's all good. So, right, I'm happy with that then. Good stuff. Right, so now we need to sort out all of this uh, ice nonsense. So, can we use... Does the melt button work? No, it doesn't. This is... That is a really annoying when that doesn't work. <laughs> Vaporize, no, melt. Freezel actually removes the water a bit more. I mean, what is going on there? That is so bizarre. Maybe if I add a bit more, do that maybe. Yeah, yeah, there you go, right. You always have to add loads of water for it to properly melt and stuff, right. And then all the snow comes back anyway, right. So it could be like a cold sort of water world, I guess. I mean, we're not going for an Earth-like world here. We are going for something with water, similar size to Earth. But being as hatable as Earth, that is not the goal here. So, yeah, it's got a few patches of water, mostly some mainland. Obviously, it's quite cold. I, I wouldn't mind it being slightly too hot. So atmosphere how about we buff it a little bit more go to 1.47 10 degrees you should be going up from 10 degrees now surely come on 10 you can just gonna stay there come on you know you want to warm up come on please how much i don't want to make it too much closer to the star so it's stuck on 10 degrees right interesting right how, how um how are we doing okay so Still, obviously, you're frozen up. Right, what I want to try, there is that button. I've forgotten how where you find it. I think it's on Sir. Is it on? No, that's not what I wanted to press. Um, that does look pretty cool, though. Um, is it the selected grid cell? No. I remember there, there, there used to be a button where you could rise and lower the land. I just can't remember where it is. Com is it on composition, maybe? No. Oh, there was definitely a button for it. Look at the stats, though. They're not too bad. Uh... Oh, I don't know where the button is. There was a button where you could lower the um the land and stuff. Oh, I don't know where it is. Uh, it used to be somewhere there. I'm sure it was. It's not anywhere here, is it? It's got to be on surface, surely. Am I just being blind? Elevation, yes. This is what I want to do. Right. So I want to lower that. Yes, there you go. That's what we want. So if I lower the elevation, that means all of the high areas get lower down. So play. Yes, that's what we want. I need to make use of this button more often because this button is that is quite useful. Because also, if I make it tall, that means all the land rises above the sea level. But if I lower it, yeah, the land should the sea level is fine. Yeah, so the land will just lower down. If I make it too low though, it will go a little too nuts. But yes, something like that. That is what I'm after. And then uh, lower the water just a tad bit. It's got a nice large ocean here, so it's almost got like its own version of like the Pacific Ocean, a huge, huge chunk. And then the mainland's over here. So that's quite cool. Right, now, colours. It's very heavy on iron as well, this one. Leave it like that, that's cool. Right. Honestly, the colours, I'm not too fast. I think the way it started off is quite good. So you can see it's like some pale sort of... It almost reminds me of a savannah or something. Like, sort of pale green, sort of sandy-looking area. Low elevation. Well, the atmosphere colour just changed when I did that. That was pretty weird. Uh, yeah, I want to go like a light sort of sandy coloured shade. So we have a representation of sand. Uh, this colour... Yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy of where it was. I think that does work quite well. And then the green, I think I'll make it just a tad more... tad sort of darker. So it's almost like a burnt sort of grass look almost. I don't know. Yeah, how about that? And then atmosphere colour went all funny, so I want to change that again. So atmosphere, that's fine. Colour, right. So it's still got that sort of Mars-like sort of colour to it. So what am I thinking? Maybe slightly more orange. Yeah. Honestly, I'm very happy with that. I'm really, really pleased with the way that's come out. Cloud colour. The white clouds never work properly now. That's really weird. Blue clouds? So it's sort of got a bit of the Earth-like stuff going on, but it's not fully there. It still was a little incomplete. But with Terraform, I guess you could probably fix this thing up. But yeah, I'm going to go blue clouds. Why not? Yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased with that. I, I think that's come out really well. So sort of Terraformed Proxima B replica i guess around the smallest star very very pleased with the way that has turned out that is that is cool i think that one's a banger uh and then yeah i'll give i'll go with the bluish i mean that is probably that is going to be our most earth-like object so yeah, i'll give it sort of an earthy sort of bluish sort of shade something like that just a sort of like pale shade yeah there we go so we've got merc and proxima b now very i'm really really pleased with that that one i think that looks really really cool so realistic that's what it looks like 
So obviously the starlight would also make it look completely different anyway. But yeah, we saw what it looked like underneath. And yeah, I'm very, very pleased with that. And actually, speaking of the object, let's check its stats. I mean, I wasn't going for a full Earth like replica, but yeah, this is, stats aren't too bad. And you know what? I know some people have asked this. I mean, it doesn't really make a difference, but we'll give it a random sort of magnet magnetic field going on. Let's see, is that going to... Oh no, we need to... This is the value we need to... Uh, one... Yeah, so we'll give it a little sort of magnetic field as well. Just a just a little protection, why not? I mean, yeah, it doesn't really make a difference in the game, but, I mean, some people like me to add them, so there you go, why not? And, yeah, there it is. Very, very pleased with that. So, yeah, hopefully that will sit comfortably on 10 degrees forever. That would be amazing. Right, moving closer to the star. So we've got Merc. Obviously, that's already all specced out happy. Now, getting closer, I'm going to use the moon this time. I'm going to place it... Uh, moon? No, don't close the menu. So I'm going to have this as all. No, I'm going to go over Io. I'm going to place Io stupidly close. So we're going to put it there. So this is right in the star's face. Obviously, that is very large. I mean, that's almost how large a red giant would be from some planets, I guess. So Io. Right, what we're going to do with you is surface colors straight away. We are going to go custom. And we're going to have like a sort of... We're going to make Io like a scorched sort of... Scorched desert, scorched earth sort of world. So I'm going to rotate it as well. Um, Colour-wise, obviously, I want to go to uh, sh directional. Right, so that's what we've got. A grayed-out IO. But I want to make this like a scorched, completely scorched desert. So sandy colours, sandy dunes. It's going to be very, very warm here. But I'm going to retain the sort of dark grey for like volcanic sort of areas. I do want it to retain like its volcanic sort of status. Atmosphere, I am going to go with this time. So we're going to go down here. Surface pressure. I guess we could have it a little crazy, 1.3 maybe. I mean, that's not too much. I mean, 1.4. So a bit of an atmosphere going on. Um, yeah, that's fine. How large is it? Do I want to change? I mean, it's Io's larger than the moon, so that's not too far off. Yeah, I'd say you could probably class Io as a planet. I think it's large enough. So plate. Yeah, I think the smallest exoplanets are roughly the size of Io anyway. So yeah, Io looking good. Scorched Earth, scorched desert version. Um temperature we're going to put you to zero degrees that should immediately spike up with 200 can it handle 200 surely at that range i mean it, i mean it's a, i know it's a red dwarf and it's not very powerful but i mean that close you should be getting some nasty temperatures going on so realistic scorched earth io scorched desert i think that's looking pretty cool right so how are we doing oh you know what if, it, if it's not going to go burning hot i will make it do it um i will make it closer i want it to be around 500 degrees um no, I don't want city lights. No, atmosphere colour. Yes. I'm thinking it's got to be a ready, sort of reddish orange shade. A very, very hot, nasty looking world. So, uh, surface colours or interface, sorry. I guess a very, very deep orangey red. Uh, interface as well. Why not? And that was cloud colour I did, wasn't it? So, clouds should be... Actually, what about black clouds? Volcanic sort of clouds. Yeah. I'll go with or like a very dark sort of greyish shade. So, volcanic clouds, red atmosphere. Yeah, I'm liking it. So, how warm is it going to go? Surely it should be getting 300? I want it to be around 500. So, I want it to have the lava. Oh, no, we don't want it smoking up, though. That is that's a little too close, maybe. It's actually been... Okay, that's not good. That's quite a big trail we're leaving behind. I mean, that does look pretty cool. That does look awesome. So that is obviously too close. Um, maybe I could make the mass larger. Maybe just give it a little more resistance. I mean, is it going to still smoke up? How large are we going to have to make it so it can... Okay, that, that looks to have fixed it. But I don't want it upset in the other orbits. Can you hold that? Is that alright? Control D, just get rid of any particles. So there shouldn't be any particles coming out of it. Yeah, th that's looking alright. So good, good. But I just need it to retain its high temp. I need it to get hotter. So, do I make it closer and risk it being torn apart? You know what? Why not? It only takes six hours to go around the star. Wow, that is... That's nuts. 500 degrees. Can you hold 500 degrees? Oh, oh, no, that's a problem. We do not want that. It's too close. Too, too close. Right, we need to get out of there quick. Double it up. Get rid of all that nonsense material. We don't want that. So, yeah, Io has been properly hurt now. I mean, that, yeah. That's not looking good. I mean, it looks like it's been hit by a collision. So that temperature is skyrocketing. 500 degrees. Just stick around 500. That's all I want you to do, Io. Oh, that is a nasty sort of bruise it's got there, isn't it? Oh, dear. I'll let that sort itself out. So Io, obviously, it's gone quite a tilted orbit as well, actually. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm liking that. So, right, if we look at Proxima D now, we should see two objects in the uh, sky during the daytime. So if we land here, 
close the menu, look around. That does look awesome. So you can see Io in the horizon there. And then we should see our other planet, our uh, Mercury, somewhere. Labels, where is it? It says Io, Mercury. Ah, there it is. So there's Merc. So you can see it. Yeah, you'd, you'd be able to spot that. You can definitely see it. So looking good. So if we obviously look on the surface, you can see Io chilling over there. Obviously very, very hot and spicy going on there. Oh, I wonder if it makes an eclipse. It, can, it sort of crosses across. Okay. Hey. So you can see that all the time as it's so close to the uh, star. Uh, Merc is a little harder to spot as it is smaller. But yeah, you can see it chilling over there. Oh, that is awesome. Hell yeah. Right. So, back to Merc. Let's see the view from Merc. So, we land on here. Cool craters on here. Right. So, how are we looking? So, there's Proxima B over there. So you can see Proxima B a lot easier than you can see this one. Right, where is Io? Yeah, there it is. Look at that. You can really see Io being this much closer. So as it goes around in this orbit, we should see the daytime side on Io now. There you go. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Really, really pleased with that. Right, so we've got a nice little mini Red Dwarf system. I mean, yeah, this is the first time I've properly made a system around a Red Dwarf. I've never I've never really used Red Dwarfs as the parent star. I've always used big things like the blue and the white stars. But yeah, using the Red Dwarf can make you a lot more creative with what you build. So, Io, Proxima, and then uh, Merc. Good, good. Right, now, I'm thinking Gas Giant, Ice Giant. I'm thinking, yeah, it's got to be an Ice Giant. I I'm going to have a far out distant Ice Giant world. So, what are we thinking here? I mean, I could use one of the templates. Ups and D, that's a cool one. Uh, Gleezer, we've got some of the Gleezer ones down there. Gastorwarf, or oh, a Gastorwarf. I think a Sulfur Gastorwarf would be really good around this star. We could have a Sister Brown Dwarf. Red Dwarf of a Brown Dwarf, yeah. It depends how large the Brown Dwarf mass is, though, because I don't want it being, I do not want it upsetting the planets. So, actually, what I'm going to do is, just in case, I'm going to make a save. So, we're going to call it a Smallest Star System. There we go. Again, I don't know if this is actually the smallest star now. I know it may have been at one point, but yeah, it's still still small enough in that regard. So, right, down here, Gasser. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go over more realistic. So I, I want to make this fairly more realistic design because usually I make mine quite fantasy with my system. So I want to try and go for a realistic. So I'm going to use this one here, the brownest of the brown dwarf ones. So I'm going to place it there. We can already see it's upsetting things. This is obviously quite a large object. It's 50 Jupiters. The mass is large. Actually, the radius. If I lock the mass at 50, I should be able to make the radius a little smaller. Play. So that should heat up very nicely. Come on. I want you to start your fusion process. There you go. Right. 25 Jupiters. If that can handle sitting around there at that distance, having the brand of Orphan here be... I look how big it is. <laughs> oh, my God. So I want to lock that. I want to make it a little smaller. That's, that's too large. So let's actually compare it. Because I know Brown Dwarfs can be larger than Red Dwarfs. I mean, that is considerably larger. But I, I want it to be... I want the Brown Dwarf to be smaller than the Red Dwarf. So I'm going to have it around that size. 6.75 Earths. Is that... Yeah. Yeah, I want I want to roll with that. I mean, I'm not sure... Yeah, no, there is definitely Brown Dwarfs that are smaller than the Red Dwarf like that. I mean, yeah, I think most Brown Dwarfs probably would be larger than this. But, okay, like, yeah, we'll go a little less realistic for this one. Because I don't want it being too stupidly large so i just want to see how large it looks from proxima b at the moment so okay yeah we can make that a little bigger actually no we'll, we'll have it a little bigger than the star i think so 1.25 jupiter yeah that's that's definitely large enough jupiter sized 0.23 extra yeah i'm comfortable with that being in here so that should sit comfortably out of this i do not want that being too close to the planets though so 3.95 months distant brown dwarf i mean yeah I mean, I don't think a companion Brown Dwarf would be stupidly close anyway. So we've got a Brown Dwarf chilling in the background. Uh, we will give it a inclined orbit just to make it look more interesting on the day and night cycles. So we're going to give it a... Yeah, just a tad. I, I do want to give it a little... Uh, just a few little changes. So something like that. Um, we'll give it a little eccentric stuff, I guess. Why not? Oh, no, that's a little too much for my liking. A little closer. Something like that. Yeah, why not? And then... Um, 3.75, 4 months, we'll go we're around 4.6 months, 4.06. So there's our Brand Dwarf, Gasser Red in here. So if we get a lineup of the objects now, Gasser should be the largest of the objects. Yep, Brand Dwarf, looking good. Um, I want to see if I can customise this actually, but first of all, I will save in case it breaks anything. So uh, why not uh, re save, replace, thank you. Right, so if we go to it now, can we make it more brownish looking? That's what I want to go here. So, I mean, there is different classes of Brand Dwarf, isn't there? So... 
Oh, that does change the glow color. Oh, that looks even. I think that looks even better now. Oh, yes. That is. So does this do anything? Okay, so it does make minor changes. So um, it's got to be obviously a dark sort of orangey. I mean, a brownish shade. We're gonna go with a sort of realistic sort of brown dwarf design here. The bands aren't gonna make any difference. I don't think. I mean, yeah, I, I want it to be all the same color. So remove that. Go with that. Interface will make it more of a sort of honestly a brownish shade. I mean, that's what we'll go for. So brown dwarf, gas of red. That trail does look a little too sort of. There, there's a better brown. I guess we'll call it Gasser Brown instead of Gasser Red now, because we definitely changed. It definitely doesn't look red anymore, or as as red. It's more of an orangey shade now. So, yeah, Gasser Brown. And yeah, that's chilling, just comfortably over there. I will actually save that. I'll use that as a template in the future. Actually, Gasser Brown. There you go. Hey. So, Brown Dwarf out in the distance. Labels and stuff off. There you go. So I think that looks fairly, fairly realistic. I mean, Brown Dwarf, not too shabby. Yeah. I like it. IO is still looking pretty, uh, pretty hot, so we'll, we'll definitely keep tabs on that. Right, so how are we doing now? So, so go ahead and turn all that off. What do we want to do next? I'm thinking definitely some sort of ice giant. I do want to still sneak in a normal gas giant and an ice giant. So, or not, not a gas giant, sorry. I want to sneak in an ice giant and a gas dwarf. So if I search uh, gas, okay, so we should have all of the gases, the gas dwarf objects. Um, I've got sulfur gas dwarf, right. Which sulfur gas dwarf do I want to use? I can't remember who made all of these. So, yeah, apologies if I can't remember who actually made it. So, what about sulfur gas dwarf seven, six or seven? I want to see what those two look like. So, we'll place seven here. Further out than Proxima B. So, we're going to place it place it there. Right. Sulfur gas dwarf. So, here we go. So, zooming in. I think it looks great with the starlight as well. Look at that glowing atmosphere. Yeah, I'm not going to modify this. This is pre-built for one of the old competitions. I can't remember who it is, so yeah, if the creator of the object is watching, let yourself be known in the comments. This is your creation. Yeah, Sulfur Gas Dwarf. Does it say in the name? No, just seven. I name, I rename them to use them as templates. I love that glow and atmosphere, but yeah, I'm not going to alter it. That's fine the way it is. I mean, the only thing I'll do is put it to zero just to see how far it temperature goes. Uh, how large is it as well? I mean, I know it's a, it's obviously a Gas Dwarf, so it should still in theory be larger than some of the Rockies. Can I customize the surface? Oh, that wasn't there a minute ago. What has happened there? Oh, that is peculiar, isn't it? That's really strange. How's that just a bit? <laughs> what is that? Guess it's some weird tidally lock stuff. I mean, that is very strange. Um, is it orbital period? What's its rotational period? Or uh, rotational period? Uh, where are you? Motion? Uh, rotational period? What? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go... 10 hours, let's go with, no, not 10 hours, not 10 days, let's make it quite fast, like Jupiter, I'm going to go with about 10 hours, it's quite a fast little rotator, this one, so, yeah, I don't know what that patch of heat is all about, I guess it just did it when I, um, turned the temperature up, but I mean, yeah, that's, it doesn't, it still looks the same, it's just with that glowing patch, that should cool down, so yeah, we'll leave that, that's fine, looking good as always, this object, um, this, yeah, the surface colours we don't need to worry about because they're hidden, um, atmosphere colour, do not touch any of those settings, I do not want to mess it up, so, That'll get a nice yellow trail. Yes, looking good. Right, so next up, I want to take a bigger jump. Yeah, I, I, I want our ice giant to be the largest planet in here. Oh, that gas of brown does look really good in the menu now. Look at that. Right, so what about one of the Epsilon Erdanis? I, I, I think they're probably some of the best templates I've got for gas giant, or ice giants. So I think the one I like to use was this one. I can't remember who built this. I think it may have been stuck in 2D. Apologies if it was somewhere else. I think this was the one he made. I'm going to place this in. So I do. I, we could have something orbiting the Brown Dwarf at some point as well. Yeah, I, I, we're definitely going to have something orbiting the Brown Dwarf. So I'm going to place it there. So it's, it's a lot, obviously a lot farther out than the Gas Dwarf is. It should still be visible. So if we just turn labels off. Yeah, you can see it chilling over there. Oh, yes, that is cool. Oh, look how good it looks with the... The starlight sort of tinting it as well. Oh, I really like this. So, oh, that is, it does look gorgeous with the starlight, I think, tinting it. I mean, yeah, that's looking good. So, slightly tilt it. Yes, hey. I like, I'm liking that. And then I'll see Brown Dwarf. This is the closest object to the Brown Dwarf so far. So, that's chilling over there. So, there's Epsilon, looking good. And actually, one thing I think I'll do for this system as well, actually. 
I'll actually do a let. I'll actually do some classification. So this would be. So we've got obviously EBLM here. Uh, is the, all the orbits are looking okay? Yep, no orbits have been ruined, so we will throw in a save uh, while we're thinking about it. So there we go, good stuff. Right. Yeah, this is this is. I'm really really happy with the way this system has gone so far. I think this has got to be one of the best ones I've made in a while. I'm really enjoying how this is turning out. So yeah, what I'm going to do this time, I don't usually do this, but. I'm going to actually have the uh, names of the objects. We're going to do the classification. So this would be a lowercase b. So I guess actually if we're going to do it, so this would be EBLM B. Well, I'm not going to put the full star name. So this would be EBLM B, and then we can put IO because that's its proper name. So EBLM B or known as IO. Then this one would be, yeah, EBLM C. So that would be Merck. Oh, no, no, that needs to be a lower case. It's only a higher case if it's a star, I believe. So, um, yeah, that's fine. And then we have uh, E, B, L, M, D. No, I need to do lower case. Stop pressing the capital letters, right? E, B, L, M, D. And this would be Proxima. Well, that's kind of weird actually saying it. So, E, B, L, M, D is actually Proxima B. So, I guess, so it's not, pro we'll just call it Prox. That, that's the name it inherits from its original name. So, E, B, L, M, D, also known as Prox. Then at Sulfur Gas Dwarf, this will now be uh, E, B, L, M. So, yep, yeah, so we had a D, so this would be E. I forgot what letter was after D for a brief moment. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, we've got, yeah, B, C, D, E. I'm not going to name this one F yet, because I don't know if I'm going to put any more objects in between. And then this over here, so this would now be E, B, L, M, capital B, because it's a star. So we've got the lowercase b for the planets, but a second star, I believe the way they do it is capitals for secondary stars. So E, B, L, M, B, and then um, we can, and then it's obviously its name now is Gasser Brown. So, yeah. Looking good. So E, B, L, M, B, also known as Gasser Brown. Cool. Yay, I'm, I'm really liking it. So if we get a full lineup of our planets so far, so this is our lineup. So obviously we've got the star. Uh, we'll go to, uh, we'll just quickly go to uh, Flashlight. There you go, right. Turn labels and all that nonsense off. Good stuff. Right, so we've got Gasser Brown, EBLM B. We've got EBLM, the original, so that would be A, this is the A star. Then we've got Epsilon Udani C. That's our ice giant, so that's obviously demolishing all the other planets. Uh, then we've got Sulfur Gas Dwarf, which is obviously one of the larger ones. Then we have got Proxima B, or Prox now, as it's known as. So the, I'm really, really happy the way that one has turned out. Don't know what's going on over there, though. Looks a little glitchy. Uh, then we have Io. The uh, Scorched Desert IO. And then we have got our Merc down here. Looking good. So, yeah, nice lineup so far. I'm really liking this. So, um, yep, go ahead and close that. And actually, I will save it now that we have um, named them all. Looking good. So, Cold Star System. Right. And I think this is going to be... Because it's a smaller system than what I normally make, I think I will fully spec this out with Moons in a, another episode as well. And uh, maybe some more planets as well. But, yeah, that, so there's our lineup now. I'm thinking I'm gonna I want to have something in between E B L M E and then E B or Epsilon over there actually. So what are we thinking? I've already got an ice giant. I don't want another ice giant. I, I I'm not even gonna bother with a gas giant because I don't want anything stupidly big. So I'm thinking it's got to be another rocky world. Now one thing we don't have yet is an ice, some sort of ice world. So maybe we had the did we have the winter we had the winter competition video. That was the last competition. So I'm thinking. Why don't we have some of the cold, icy winter wells you guys made? So I think the one I quite like was Pluto Neon's one here. And this was the one with all of the different coloured snow because it had some real cool... He had a real cool scientific backstory about the coloured snow. So I'm thinking I'm going to put that in here. So it's also going to retain its coldness um, or its winter temperatures because it's going to be fairly further out. It's going to be further out than our gas dwarf. It's not going to be... So I'll take maybe a jump. I don't want it being too big of a jump like that, but I'm thinking... Somewhere, somewhere here, maybe. I don't want it getting interrupted by Epsilon either. So we can have it quite close. Make the orbit a little more. So I'm going to place it there. It already has a name as well. Um, so we don't need to name it. We'll just have to put EBLM at the front of it. So there it is. So that's how, that's the winter planet. It has the green oceans as well, which is really, really cool. So one thing I will do with this is, since we're getting a little further out now, we're going to give it an eccentric stat. So we're going to 0 0.1 just to start off with. So how's that looking? So maybe a little, little more. Yes, yes, I'm liking that. And then lower this just a tad. Yeah, 
Yeah, I rate that. I'm liking that. So I just need to check that this does not get interrupted by the ice giant, though. So I'm going to put it there. Then we're going to move Epsilon right alongside it. Um, yeah, there. Okay, that's fine. I mean, if we look at the uh, menu, that wasn't anywhere near it. I mean, to be... Yeah, Epsilon has not got not any gravity to take that over. So, right, that's fine over here. Right, so here it is. And what we could do with this as well is we could make it a super earth. So we're going to make it larger. So 0 0.6 earths. So I'm not going to change any of the other stats. It's already pre-built. So all I'm going to do is simply do is make it bigger. 1.36 earths. Is that... That's the sort of super earth sort of size. It's got that weird glitch thing. I think all the planets have got that at the moment. So that's really weird. If anyone knows how to fix that, let me know, please. Um, but yeah, that's all That's all fine. All good stuff. So just a quick comparison. The super earth. Yeah, the largest. It's even bigger than the gas dwarf, actually. See, I'm very happy with the way that is... Um, the size of that out. So comparing it to the Earth itself. So where are we? Earth. Yeah. So larger than Earth. Would you class it super Earth though? Let me know in the comments. But yeah, it's still, uh, still uh, larger than Earth. So yeah, happy with that. And yep, simply it's all fine the way it is. I think to have the green oceans, it needed to be minus 10. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is. So already pre-built. Don't need to change anything. All good. It's got a custom interface. Very happy with that. So thank you, uh, Pluto Neon, for making that. So it's now in a system. Looking good. So there it is. Obviously looking different due to the star color. And it's got the city lights. Hey, good stuff. Oh, yes. So that's all good in there. EBLOM E. So this would, e this would now be EBLM F. But we'll keep its original name as well. So E B L M and then F. Like that. A. Hey. Because in theory, if we look at our solar system, Earth would be planet, so it'd be Mer yeah, Mercury would be so it'd be Sol B, Venus would be Sol C, Earth would be Sol D. If you if you want to use the Sol instead of the Sun uh, as the name. But yeah, be that, it's sort of like that. So that's what we're doing. So how E B L M F, then it's got its normal name. So if we would have Earth around the Sun, it'd be Sol, then the letter, and then it'd just be named Earth. So, yeah, that's sort of the way I'm classing it. So, we're having all of the all the letters in here, making it a little more interesting. So, looking good. Very happy with the way that has turned out. So, smallest star system. Right, I'm thinking one more planet in between Eblm F and Epsilon Erdani over there. So, what are, we, what are we thinking? I'm thinking another winter world. So, what we could do is have a comp. I do want to use all of these as well. So... That was the world of oil. I remember that was the world of oil. We've got Porter. That was little Carly's one. I think that one was slightly damaged or slightly broken. So we could remake it, actually. Um, I could I could remodify that. Because I think it was meant to have a white atmosphere, but it appeared with, like, a yellow Venus one. So that could be quite good. We haven't got a Venus-like world, actually. So I'm going to place Porter. That Yeah, that's got no influence over that. Okay. I'm going to place it there. So if we just look at the overall orbit size. So I'm going to place it... I'm going to place it there. So there's Porter. Okay. Right. Looking good. Oh, no. It's, it's, it appears to be... Is it fixed? I don't know. It was meant to be white. The, the colour was meant to be white. I know it, I know it was. Yeah, it doesn't properly appear white. Oh, that is really strange um, why the planets do that now. But I, what I do want to try is... I, I think it's got... Okay, it's all just water underneath, actually. So we could, we could properly make a replica of this. So... Right. Do I have any crazy cloud objects that are not Venus? I don't want to use Venus. Because that... Yeah, right. Uh, do I have anything? This one here. That Obviously, that is huge now. But I sh if I remove the gas, I should be able to re-modify it to make a white one. So if we remove... I was going to make it smaller, actually. So rem there you go. Right, now, can I customise that atmosphere to white? If I can, that would be perfect. I don't know if this will work. But it's worth a shot. I can. And it has a nice blue tone to it as well. So it's got a bit of modded action. So I guess we could, yeah, sort of remake this one. So, yeah, because they did they did come to me in the, in Discord and say the object, that wasn't how it was supposed to be. So, yeah, we're, we're going to sort of make it, make a new version of it for them. So, yeah, there, that's what it looked like. It was meant to have a white atmosphere. So now we have one with a nice sort of blue tone to it. And then underneath it was an ocean world. So obviously we need to add some water like so. Nice. We'll just have it as a deep ocean world, actually. That's obviously, it's stupidly large, so we're going to need to make it smaller. Um, I believe it was the size of Venus. How large was it? Comp. Um, Porter was... Right, so let's place it there. So, Porter. So, it's 1.26 Earth. So, it actually was larger than uh, Venus. Then. So, 1.26. Input that in. Looking good. Right, so there we can remove the original one now. Then we have a... Oh, atmosphere. Wait, 
Atmosphere. Where'd you go, man? Oh, I didn't... Did I, I don't remember turning it off, did I? Oh, no, I did turn it off, didn't I? It's got glowing clouds as well. Look at that. Hey. So I don't want to change those cloud colours or anything. We'll leave that the way it is. Atmosphere's fine. Liquid water is, is all good. That We don't need to modify any of that. Um, and underneath it was a uh, ocean world. So make it quite, quite deep ocean. So if we look on a uh, flashlight, there's your world. So Porter remade studio mode. There's a good look of it. So what do you think of that? Hope that hope that um, hope that is satisfactory in your eyes, little Carly. So there you go. There's my remake of it. So there we are. Right. Uh, and then um, realistic mode. How large is it compared to our other Super Earth as well? So if we look down here, not as large as um, Evil M F here. So, I am going to make a slight modification to the size. I want that one to be a unique Super Earth size. So, I'm going to make it a little smaller. I'm going to go with 0 0.85. So, it fits in roughly with the other sort of rocky worlds in here. How's Io doing? Uh, Io, that, okay, I don't want to mod it. What is going on with Io? Some real glitchy stuff going on over there. Is that too too small? I mean, this, this fits in well. There's Proxima there. So, 0 0.48. Eh, 0 Oh, that, that's not what I wanted. No, 0 0.48, not 1.48. Yeah. I want it to be on the smaller scale of things. Fit. I want it to be, yeah, roughly there. There we are. Right, so zoom out. So we made a slight adjustment to its radius, but other than that, it's all fine. Still got the nice glowing blue on it um, with the atmosphere as well. Looking good. So yeah, that's chilling out here. And obviously it's very tinted due to the star color. But obviously if we uh, did, um, yeah, that's how it should look. So... Well, that's how it does look. It's just the stars changing it. So, right, so we have Porter. So this will be um, EBLMG. So if we go EBLM, then it'll be G, lowercase, and then it's known as Porter. And then now over here, we can do this one. So this would now be EBLM. So EBLMH, like that. And then um, we'll just call it Epsilon. That'll be its new name. There you go, capital letter for the E, like so. Hey, so Epsilon. Now, on to Epsilon itself. Gas giant, or ice giant, largest planet in the solar system here. Part, yeah, I'm not including the brown dwarf as a planet, because that's its own thing. So, largest planet. And I'm going to use the remaining winter worlds. So, we've got a lost 7044, uh, 7024 as well. So, we're going to place that in there. We've got Siren's World. We're going to place that around it as well. We've got Core's World. And then we have Astronomy Geek's World. So we're going to have all of those around Epsilon. So they're all going to be a, a collection of snowy winter worlds. Snowball there. I'm probably going to modify the sizes. That's the only thing I need to do. So 0 0.8 Earths, 1.14 Earth, 1.08 Earths, and 1.22 Earths. So I do want to make them smaller because I think we will see some collisions if I don't. So I'm, they need to be made a lot smaller. So we're going to half the mass on every single one of them. That should fix it. Hopefully, it wasn't ruin them too much. Um, actually, I will do them individually. Actually, so what was on? I ruined this one quick, so I'm just going to put that, put a new one of those in quickly. So that was this one, right? So then we can watch as things change. So Snowball D, we're starting off with you, and then um, we'll just quickly put a uh, Snowball D. Right, so we'll put a new fresh one of those in. Right. So how are we doing here? Right. So appearance wise, play and pause. Yes, yeah, so we can see stuff would get messed up immediately. So how does this look? So we'll quickly go on flashlights or studio so we can see everything. So that's what it looks like. Right. So all I want to simply do to you is lower it down. Okay. So that doesn't change any at all. So we can have that as a nice small little moon chilling fairly close to um, the, the planet. So Snowball D. Um, yeah, that will completely drag that away and give it a fresh orbit. So we're going to move it there. Auto orbit, please. Thank you very much. There you are. Right. Now, next up, we've got this world. Now, this was the world of the oil oceans, if I remember right. So, this was quite a cool one. So, how are we looking? So, yeah, already we can see it's messing up the other orbits. So, we need to obviously lower it down. So, put that on. This needs to go a lot lower. So, we can see the oceans are disappearing. So, we do need to increase the water value to add them back. So, there's our oil oceans looking good. I did like this one. This was a cool one. So, radius is still 1.1 Earths. So it's got less mass, but the radius is fine. So that will be one of the larger moons. We'll put that further out over here for the time being. So we'll to orbit. We want it to orbit the planet. Okay, so I'm guessing that we just need to click play to fix it. So play, pause. Yes, there you go. Right, good stuff. Right, so the next world out was this one. 
This was, I think this was the one Siren made, and it had a Europa. Was this Siren's one? I think it was. Yeah, Siren made the Europa. So here it is. Over here. Right, so how are we doing? So this one had a two-tone atmosphere as well. So again, we're leaving it the way it was. We just need to make it smaller in a mass. So smaller. So we can see the ice is slowly disappearing. But honestly, I think that's all right. And then what, what, what actually what we can do as well, we can go to that elevation button and simply just pull it back up. So was it composition, surface, was it surface? Where did the button go? Am I being blind again? Appearance, no, surface, was it? Composition, was it down? Oh, that button, I just cannot remember where it is. Surface heat, no, we don't that. Yeah, here it is, elevation, right. So if I just add it up, that adds the snow back. I mean, it's a winter world. It needs its snow. So nice and nice and easy like so. There you go. Cool. So there's that one added in. Good stuff indeed there. We'll, we'll make it closer than the other, the big one. I think um, this one should pr probably be, if it's the largest moon, I want it to be the furthest one out. And then lastly, we've got Snow Trappist. We'll place that simply in between the moons. So looking good. How large is Snow Tra Trappist? Uh, 1.2 to Earth. Obviously, we can't have that. Um, let's zoom in on the object, please. Good, good. So it's down here. So as we can see, icy world. Got oceans on it. Nice, simple ice world. So we just need to simply, yeah, lower it. So mass, lower that down, please. Put that on quick. So we can see, yeah, the water disappears. We need to add the water back. The radius isn't changing, so we'll manually change that then. Okay, there you go. So that, that seems to have done the job. So it's nice little, small little guy in there. It had city lights as well, I believe, if we look. Yeah, there, there is definitely lights on it. So, so there's Snow Trappist. So that should comfortably just sit around the planet as well. So click play. Okay, this one wants to break away. So we can see the star. Oh, no, there you go. Okay. So does that work? If we click play, speed it up. We can see there's a little bit of interference going on. Right, what is causing that? So 0. Okay, so yeah, 0. 0.05. That should be okay. 0. 0.271. Okay, so we're going to make Siren's object smaller again. Play again. That's still not... Oh, I don't know what's causing it. So this one is being stretched out to zero point... I guess we just need to make them really, really low in mass then. Like, very low. And I guess, yeah, we'll have to... Oh, I'm going to make this one smaller. Because I think that one is probably upset in it as well. And then just simply add the water back. Or the oil, I should say. So add its oil oceans back. Play. Okay, smoking up. Okay, so we want that make that bigger then if it's doing that. Ooh, we don't want you smoking up. Don't do that. That's not good. There you go. So that seems to have fixed it for now, but I don't know. We may have to break it. I'm just going to break that one away and just have it orbiting the star for the time being. So that's fine over there. We just need to work out which object is causing these to change. So I think the first two moons seem to be all right. Okay, Europa's smoking up as well. Ah, that is a problem when you start making their mass really, really small. So we need to sort of work out. Okay, so that's fixed it now, but I'm going to make you closer. Maybe just making it closer to the gas giant will help. So, okay, so we'll leave that. Yeah, we'll leave Trappist just chilling out there. Right, so we just need to make sure the first two work before we start adding more in. So that seems to be comfortable there. Snowball, I'm going to make you. So that's 0 0.05. This one is 0 0.135. So, yeah, we're going to make you closer. 1.8 days. That should be okay there. Yep, the gas giant won't tear it up. Uh, and then I'm going to half this one's orbit as well. So I guess I can sort of see a Jupiter sort of moon set here. So four moons, similar orbit sizes, but and all the moons are, I guess you could say they're fairly similar in radius. We'll have to compare them. Um, yeah, right. We don't want to change that. We want to do this. Okay, so those are looking comfortable there. They're looking fine. Right. Next up, we've got Snow Trappist. We need to bring Snow Trappist, Trappist back into the mix. Right. Can we pull it? Honestly, we may be able to sneak it just in the same sort of orbital period as the other one. I mean, we can have a go. As long as those... Honestly, that could work. That honestly could work. So... I don't want them being too close. So I'll make it maybe a little closer. Maybe. Ugh, it's a little risky. But they should be... That is very dangerous. That is dangerous. That is too dangerous, surely. Closer. Okay. Yes, and then what I can do here is simply just make Snowball a little further out. Again, like so. That is that is quite close. Oh, play. Yes. 
Okay. Looking good. Right, so where did... Okay, so there's the other one. The oil object over here. Can we sneak it in? It should... I think this should be able to sneak around. There you go. Yes. Now, that should comfortably just sit out there. It's the largest of the moons. 1.1 in radius. 0 0.28 in mass. Obviously, we can see... Yep, I do want to. I don't want it being that eccentric. I want them to be fairly similar to Jupiter's set, of being quite a flat sort of, yeah, something like that. Right, and that is all. I'm, I want to say that's all comfortable. Um, I do need to lower the. I oh know the water on that's fine. Uh, snowball is looking fine as well. Yes, yep, that's fine. And then uh, this was Sirens objects. That was the Europa object. Yep, that looking fine as well. And then um, yeah, the oil object at the end. So. How does that run? So, we, so actually, we need to watch this in speed. We need to check those orbits stay roughly where we want. So we can see the largest moon orbit is shaking tiny. But the in the three moons seem to be perfect now. They seem to be they're happy. They're working. The largest moon, I am kind of... I'm not liking how close it is to that one there. So, I'm, yeah. Eh, going to lower... I, that radius is still a little too large for my liking. So I'm going to lower that. Right, it's not smoking up, which is good. Auto orbit out there. Yes. Oh, they're all in Oh, look at that. We've paused it and they're all in line. Look at that. Hey. One, two, three, and then four. All in the line. That's cool. Oh, yeah. That's a good time to pause it. Right, so we need to lower the uh, water. Or the oil, I should say. There you go. I need, it needs its land back. That's what made it really unique is the way its land was. So, yes. There you go. And like that, it is... Yeah. I think that is comfortable. I don't think that will break away. I think I think we're good. I mean, it is a little wobbly, but I think that's all right. So, yeah, that's all good. Um, interface, I want to give you a... I'm thinking it's quite a dark one. The oil planet should have quite a dark trail, I think. This one over here was the Europa that had a blue trail. Snowball, white trail, and then obviously those two had their own colours anyway. I'm thinking, no, I think this one does need a, um, a lighter trail. So I'm thinking bright, bright white. Snowball had a darker white. Or like a more of a greyish shade. How's that one looking? Yep. Okay, that's fine. And then Snow Trap is in there. That one already had a custom colour. Looking good. Okay. Cool. So they're all in orbit of Epsilon there. So all of these are competition objects. I mean, the, the gas giant itself was a competition object as well. So... Yeah, the inner, the inner three moons are perfect. I think they're completely fine. We can see they're running. They're orbiting. They're doing their job. Yep. That outer moon, though, does seem to really be pushing it. We can see it's probably the presence of the brown dwarf. You can see it's being pulled towards where the brown dwarf is. I think that's probably why. So I think what we need to do is we need to just simply... I think that will need to be its own planet then. Maybe it's maybe it can be classed as the escaped moon. How about that? And then we can have it in orbit of the star. Yeah. So all the other stuff's all going fine. The moons... Yeah, I, I just don't think the planet can support that fourth moon. With that brown dwarf being there. So unless we move the brown dwarf... F yeah, you can see straight away the brown dwarf is having an effect. So, yeah, alright. What we're going to do is... We're going to buff your orbit out more. So we're going to take a big jump. And then we're going to try again to put this around the gas giant. So, play. We need to auto-orbit you again, please. Thank you. Okay, closer. Need it to lock back on. That is a bit of a crazy orbit there. So we need to quickly move it down. Drag it in. Auto orbit once more. Fourth moon's orbit. I'm hoping now that should be okay. Brown dwarf, obviously big orbit. Quickly auto orbit you again. Yeah, that we do want that being bigger than. There you go. We'll leave it at 8.7 months now. So that's far, far out there, Brown Dwarf, Sister Star. Now this I'm hoping this should be it. This should be able to stick in there. Be alright. So I'm gonna try again lowering the mass just a tad. So we'll just go 0 0.09. Add the water back just to get the... Um, yep. Play. Okay, so now it's smoking out, so we do not want that. So we need to just keep pressing it so it goes away. A little bigger. Come on. Stop doing that. We do not want you doing that. Get out of here. Yes. Okay, so it's going to have to be around there, I think. I mean, what, what the alternative is just moving it even closer, but I don't think that is a good idea, so... Or is it... Or can it handle it? Oh, oh, we may have that. Oh, we may have been able to do it because it's still losing material, which is really, really annoying. So, a little bigger. We can see the orbit is being bent. 
you can definitely see the orbit is being bed. But if that can just stay in there and just handle it, we're good. I'm think I'm I'm hoping that's I'm hoping that is the end of it. I'm hoping we've done it. The water does seem still a little too much lower. Get that land back. Yep, there you go. Something like that. It's going to rotate in quite a weird way. That one. I think on the whole that is that is all right. I mean I, I don't know because it, it its orbit does seem to cross this one. Maybe the presence of this one is affecting that one. So that's 0 0.135. This one's 0 0.125. So if I put this one closer and then move this one further away, the largest moon it should be. Yeah, I'm that should be better doing that. The moon with the largest mass should be the furthest out. Otherwise, it will just push the other moons away. So, yeah, I think I think we're all right. I don't know if I had to move the brown dwarf as much, but I don't know. That seems to be functioning really well now. I mean, look, the orbit's not even wobbling. That is... Oh, no, no, it is, you know, it is slightly in there. Slightly, slightly wobbling. But it's, I think it's Bella. It's definitely Bella. Yeah, we can see the snowball is being slightly affected now because of the presence of that one. So, I mean, maybe we just make both of the moons further out. I mean, I don't know how long the gas giant will hold on for. So, how about that? I mean, I think that may be a little too much, though. I'm not, I'm not sure. Or if it works, I mean, that's all good as well. I mean, I hope maybe maybe I just put them too close together. Maybe I just made a mistake there. I mean, how's that looking now? No, it's definitely... The, the, there's definitely... The, I think the Brown Dwarf is definitely having a pull on them to do that. It's got to be the Brown Dwarf. So I think what we'll, we'll just have to go with what we did before is have those... The three moons that worked, they were in there. They were fine. But the fourth moon just will not hold on, unfortunately. So if it breaks away, it breaks away, I think. So yeah, we'll move the, the third moon was... Yeah. And then the fourth moon, put you out of the way in case it... Because you do not want a collision. But I'm thinking, yeah. So we'll, we'll let it we'll let it be there for now. But if it breaks away, it breaks away. And then we'll just have to um, put it somewhere else. But yeah, there we go. So we've got a full set of moons going around the uh, first... Or the, the gas giant so far. So that's where we'll finish off for today. Honestly, yeah. It, I mean, it does remind me of Jupiter. If you look at it from this view, you've got four moons making the like um, shadows on the parent planet. Slow down time a bit. Uh, turn that off. But yeah, that reminds me of like the old pictures of... Um, when Galileo was looking at Jupiter and it saw the four dots going around it. That's kind of what I'm getting from this. Look at that. That's cool. Hey, so this one would be Snow Trappist would be Io. Snowball would be Europa. Um, Ganymede would be the blue one. And then Callisto would be the oil one at the end there. But yeah, there you are. So labels off. Did I just see Roosh Limit break something there? No, there's no particles. That's no, just me seeing things. I thought I saw something fall off it. Now it's just a shadow, I think. And there's all four of them lined up as well. Look at that. Hey. So we'll flip. Slow it down. So yeah, all four moons in there at once. So we'll, uh, yeah, we'll just quickly save it. The smallest star system will save and replace. And yeah, that does it for today's video, guys. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. If you've got any feedback or suggestions, any way I, maybe I could fix the moons even more, let me know down below in the comments. And yeah, just any feedback, other objects we could add, stuff like that. I mean, yeah, we have quite a nice list of things so far. I'm really happy with the way that gas giant looking at the moment. But yeah, so there's our full lineup. I'll go to studio mode. So brown dwarf, red dwarf, gas giant or ice giant. And we've got our uh, super earth with the different colored snow and the green oceans. We've got our um, gas dwarf. We've got our Proxima B that we worked on at the start. So that's the closest to Earth-like. We've got we've got the Io Scorch Desert, which is looking a little funny at the moment. I don't know what's going on there. Then we have got um, Porter, which is the world we rebuilt because it didn't work in the competition correctly. Then we have, yeah, all of your other competition objects um, slotted in here. Then we've got Merc. And then, yeah, the other competition object at the very bottom there. So we've got a nice list of uh, snowy objects. And then, yeah, we've got some larger ones um, in there as well. And then the, the gas giant, or ice giant, gas giant, whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, there's our full lineup. I'm honestly, I'm very, very pleased with the way that has turned out. And honestly, what we can do as well, if we go back to realistic mode, we can take a look from one of the inner planets and see if we can spot the outer planets in the night sky. So, we'll land on uh, Io, because, yeah, it's the innermost world. Or actually, maybe we should go somewhere in the middle, because that would probably be the best bet of spotting something. So, I'll go with EBLME here. Or do I go with Trappist? I'm thinking Trappist will be the best, actually, because this is the... Yeah, well, not Trappist, Proxima. Getting all my names mixed up now. So, we land on Proxima. Labels orbits off. 
So, if we look in the night sky, what can you see? So, there's a brown dwarf. Obviously, that'd be an easy spot. Porter. You can see Porter over there. Uh, we turn the label off. You can just about see a little dot. Mer you've got Merc over there. Uh, I'll see Io very close. You can see the um, the Super Earth. The Super Earth is clearly visible. Over there, that's the one with the different coloured snow. Anything in this direction. You've got EBLME over there. That was the um, Gas Dwarf. The Sulphur Gas Dwarf. And I think the gas, yeah, the other gas, the main gas planet, um, Ice Giant over there, Epsilon. The moons, I mean, if we click play, you should be able to see the moons moving. It's going to be quite hard with our own rotation going. But if we put labels, now you can't even see the moons. But I reckon if, in reality, if this was a real scenario, if you looked up at Epsilon with a telescope, you would definitely see the shadows of the moons on it easily, especially at this range. If Galileo could do it with Jupiter at Jupiter's range, this would be an easy spot. You could probably do it with the naked eye, I reckon, if you looked up at it. You definitely, you definitely would probably see little dots across it. I don't know if the game will let us. I don't know where the moons are positioned, but I'm just trying to hold the camera moving with the planet. But yeah, I reckon you would definitely see shadows on that. Um, how are we looking in the rest of the uh, system? So I'll see Brown Wolf, I'll see all the other objects over there. Yeah, honestly, really, really cool. I really, really like the way that has turned out. So labels on again, orbits, awesome stuff. And actually, one thing I will do, actually, I think if we look from this object's point of view, we should see some more as well. So we'll land in the cities. So EBLMF. Look at the lights. Oh, yeah, look at that. Right, so orbits labels off. Right, so we've got Epsilon over there. Obviously, the gas giant. We're on the other side of the star, so the gas giant. Brown Dwarf should be in the distance, chilling over there. Right, so if we put labels on, where's everyone else? EBLM E. There's Proxima over there. That's where we were just standing. Proxima is quite a hard view because we're obviously we're a lot further out. I can't see Io at the moment, so I'm guessing it's the star, the light is not facing this way. But yeah, I think this is really, really cool. Red Dwarf, obviously close proximity with the planets. And yeah, that is our that is our system. So yeah, very happy as is the gas giant moons. Yep, they're all they're all alright. Good stuff so far. Yeah. Really, 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 really pleased with that. I think that is definitely one of my favourites. Definitely one of my favourite systems I've made so far. It's, it's really, really, really cool, I think. So, I really like that. You can see the moon's orbits far out as well. I think that's really, really cool. So, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with that. That is, a, that is a good one. So, yeah, I hope you guys um, agree with me. And, yeah, let me know feedback, suggestions. Let me know down below in the comments. Be much appreciated. And, yeah, just any objects you'd like to see, stuff like that, let me know. So I think, yeah, that was a really, really good one. And, yeah, next episode, we'll try and add some more planets in. We'll definitely add some planets around the Brown Dwarf. And then we'll add some moons in to the planets we've got so far as well. And probably an asteroid belt or something um, as well. But, yeah, that all said and done, guys. Make sure you all have a great day. Let's see if we can go for 50 likes on today's video for making a system around uh, the smallest star or one of them. Um, and, yeah, make sure to subscribe if you're new. Help us on the journey to 20,000 subscribers. As we're about halfway now to 20,000. So, yeah, huge thank you to everyone. It means the world. Really, really appreciate it, guys. And, yeah, that all said and done. Make sure you all have a great day. And, yeah, stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.